welcome uh, everyone to uh, Upper Room Ministry of Sunday School here in Dover, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're so glad that you've joined, joined us, uh, however you may be joining us, whether in person or on television. Uh, we are continuing our uh, prophecy study uh, of, uh, of what prophecies have uh, come to pass in the Bible and what have yet to come to pass. Uh, we last left off in uh, Isaiah chapter 25, so let's uh, turn there. Uh, let's look at verses uh, 10 through 12. Uh, this would be a prophecy um, 1662. Uh, this, judge, this is a judgment uh, on uh, Moab, uh, specifically uh, Moab in the uh, millennial times. It says, For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. Now, notice it says, uh, in this mountain, that is uh, Mount Zion. That's where um, the Millennial Kingdom uh, will be established by Christ. And this, um, and this judgment on Moab uh, is, also, is also spoken of in Psalm uh, 60, verse 8 and also uh, in the entire chapter of Isaiah 15. Okay, that concludes chapter 25. And we now turn to chapter uh, 26. Again, this is a, a millennial prophecy. Uh, verses 1 through 4, uh, it is a, a song of triumph that uh, Isaiah prophesies uh, will be sung uh, in it. In the song, uh, the people of the land of Judah are celebrating that they're a strong, uh, they have a strong city, and uh, salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. And, uh, and it, pr it pretty much uh, is a celebration of the city, most likely of uh, New Jerusalem. Moving down to uh, verse 5. It says, For he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city, he layeth it low, he layeth it low even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. The foot shall tread, tread it down, even the feet of the poor, and the steps of uh, the needy. Uh, this is Prophecy 1664. I am believing this is a reference to uh, End Times Babylon because um, chapter 26 uh, definitely seems to be a millennial chapter. Okay. Verses uh, 10 and 11. It says, Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness, the land of uprightness. Will he deal justly, and will not behold the majesty of the Lord? Lord, when thy hand is lift up, lifted up, they will not see, but they shall see, and be ashamed for their envy. Yea, the fire of thine enemy shall devour them. This is a, a prophetic statement uh, towards the wicked that uh, really uh, is, goes on throughout time. When God uh, shows favor, the wicked uh, don't recognize him. Uh, when he... When God deals, um, yet when, yeah, verse 10 talks about when God shows his favor, the wicked don't recognize them, but it's only when uh, God's hand is lifted up against them they, that they finally uh, see and become ashamed. So that's just the way of the wicked. And uh, the fact that uh, Isaiah says, will not and uh, shall see, He's talking in a future tense, so for, so for that reason we call this a prophecy. We then head to uh, verse 19, uh, prophecy 1666. Thy dead shall live together with my body, shall they arise, awake, and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. This is talking about uh, the resurrection uh, of the dead. Uh, Isaiah is saying, uh, the dead men shall live together with my dead body, they shall arise. So, um, the, 
bodies that they are that are once dead, they shall rise again and and ultimately be transformed into uh, new heavenly bodies, which uh, which came to pass um, is was not only in the book of Matthew where uh, all the Old Testament uh, saints were resurrected, but also uh, when the uh, when that final trumpet sounds and the rapture takes place, all those who are uh, still dead in Christ will be raised up. And the ones still living in Christ will be called up. Okay, verses uh, 20, 20 through uh, 21. Uh, these two verses uh, talk about, um, specifically it talks about um, the hiding of uh, Israel uh, during the three and a half years of tribulation in Revelation uh, chapter 12. It says, uh, Come, my people, enter thou uh, into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as if, as if it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, The woman, Israel, was called into the wilderness, to hide there for three and a half years. And uh, then further down in 21 says, For the, behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish, him, punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Uh, the earth shall, earth shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Yes, uh, this is uh, the great tribulation, the final three and a half years, while, um, while uh, Israel is in hiding. Uh, the Lord will be um, punishing the wicked, uh, those who are following the Antichrist, and, and so forth. Chapter 27, verse 1. Uh, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Uh, this is a um, another millennial prophecy, talking about how uh, Jesus will ultimately say the, slay the dragon. That is uh, Satan. Satan is, after all, uh, called a dragon in um, in the Book of Revelation. Remember, there is an unholy trinity: the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And um, for those who are curious about uh, Leviathan, uh, turn to uh, we'll read uh, Job chapter 41. That chapter is dedicated entirely to Leviathan and the description of him. Uh, and one verse that really stands out is the last verse, uh, Job 41 verse 34, 34, I'm sorry, where Leviathan is described as the king of the children of pride catch that, children of pride. And um, as, as we all know, God opposes the proud, but gives uh, grace to the humble. So if you are a child of pride, you are a child of the devil, or a Leviathan, however you choose to call yourself. Okay. We go down to uh, verses uh, 2 through 6. This is a description of uh, God's uh, care for Israel. It says, In that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. Israel is being described as a vineyard, and therefore God is describing himself as the uh, vineyard keeper. It says, I the Lord do keep it, I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it, and I will keep it night and day. Uh, and in verse 4 it says, Fury is not in me. So uh, in the millennial, come the millennial kingdom, God will no longer be angry with Israel. He instead will be his constant caregiver and protector and keeper. All right. Then we uh, skip down to um, verses uh, 10 and 11. Uh, the defense, it says, Yet the defense city shall be desolate, and the habitation forsaken, 
and left like a wilderness. There shall the calf feed, and there he shall lie down and consume the branches thereof. Now you'll notice um, it says, left like a wilderness, there shall the calf feed. That exact uh, same uh, language is used in Isaiah chapter 13, verses 19 through 22, where it talks about uh, Babylon being just grass and wilderness, and the city will never be rebuilt. I, uh, Old Testament Babylon has never been rebuilt, and uh, will most likely never be rebuilt. And, this, uh, and the same will come true with uh, end times Babylon. It will be uh, laid waste, left desolate, never to be rebuilt. It will just be wilderness. <clears throat> All right. Uh, verses uh, 12 and 13, uh, prophecy uh, 16 and 1671. This is a, a millennial prophecy about uh, the regathering of uh, Israel. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. It says uh, that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. Notice it says children of Israel. Okay, that means uh, that means Jewish people of all and not just of Judah, but of all tribes remaining on earth. So it's very, very specific about who's being gathered. And um, when, when it says, the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, that means that every obstruction in the final and complete regathering of Israel at the second advent of Christ will be removed, including the drying up of the Euphrates and the Nile. If God uh, sees so fit to uh, make that happen, he most certainly can make it happen. Uh, then down in verse 13 it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which are ready to perish, perish in the uh, land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of Jerusalem. Now, it is believed that uh, Jesus uh, confirms this uh, prophecy in his own words. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. Let me read it to you. It says, And he will send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the earth to the other. So there, there we also have a great trumpet and a, a gathering uh, of his elect uh, from, the, uh, from the four winds. Is that, uh, is that the same thing? It certainly sounds like it. All right. Chapter uh, 28, uh, verses uh, 1, uh, down, through verse, through, through, down through verse 4. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is a, a prophecy uh, of the incoming Assyrian invasion into Ephraim, which, as we've already discussed, is uh, the ten northern nations of Israel. Uh, this, is, um, this invasion uh, comes to pass uh, in the book of 2 Kings, uh, chapter uh, 17. And, uh, like I said, it deals with the invasion of, um, of Ephraim. And then, we go down to uh, verses uh, 5 and 6. Uh, this is the beginning of prophecy, 1673. Uh, verses uh, 5 and 6, um, God identifies uh, Judah as uh, to be the remnant, as to be uh, the ones who uh, avoid uh, the Assyrian invasion. It's, it talks about, in that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. Residue means remnant. And for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gates. Okay. However, uh, that, uh, that was uh, the intent, that was the plan 
uh, for, um, for Judah. However, as we read uh, verses uh, 7 through 13, um, Judah is reprimanded because uh, they too are uh, equally guilty of a variety of sins. Um, drunkenness uh, is found uh, throughout these verses. Um, verse 7 it says, But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink and are out of the way. And uh, verse 11 says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will uh, speak to his people. Stammering um, is, into is intoxicated talk. Uh, verse 8, for the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place to clean. Uh, when you drink too much, you throw up. And uh, most likely, there was a lot of uh, eating and gluttony, which can also cause you to vomit. So there was just a lot of, uh, of self-indulgence and a lack of uh, genuine teaching and teaching of genuine knowledge, as, uh, as are outlined in verses uh, 9 and 10 and as well as uh, verse 13. Okay, and then we move down to uh, verse uh, 16. Oh, I should point out that um, that, the, that the Assyrians, uh, while they did invade uh, Ephraim, uh, they did not invade uh, Judah. Um, and if you read Isaiah 36 through uh, and 37, you'll find that God did protect Judah from, from Assyria. However, Judah, Judah would face judgment later on down the road uh, with, the, um, <clears throat> with the invasion of the Romans in 70 AD. Uh, Judah, Jerusalem was completely uh, demolished and wiped out by the Romans. Um, let's uh, skip back to um, verse 16. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. That, of course, is a, uh, is a messianic reference, because Christ is called the cornerstone, the great cornerstone. And, uh, as we all know, the cornerstone uh, was rejected uh, by Jerusalem, and uh, thus came uh, their judgment, as is uh, outlined and laid out, and I should say laid out, in verses 17 through uh, 22. And, um, you know, in verse 19 it says, From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you, for morning by morning shall it pass over, by night and day it shall be a vexation only to understand uh, the report. Now what that means is that the judgment will be so terrible that it will be a vexation to even hear a report of what's happened. Uh, such was the case uh, of the Roman invasion of um, 70 AD. And uh, the reason why we believe um, it's because of the Roman invasion and not the Babylonian invasion is because of verse 16, because that's a messianic um, prophecy messianic prophecy, and then can come the judgment. And so that's why we believe that. Messianic prophecy comes first. Okay. Now we move to uh, chapter 29. It says, Woe to Ariel, to Ariel the city where David dwelt. Uh, Ariel, by the way, is another name for uh, Jerusalem. Uh, Ariel, uh, translated, means the Lion of God. So, yes, Jerusalem is called a lion, and um, I find it fast, and um, I find it fascinating how uh, Satan is called uh, to be running around like a roaring lion. Yes, that just shows that Satan is a counterfeiter. He sounds like a lion. He roars like one, but he is not a lion. No, he is not. Jesus is the true lion, and uh, when he returns, he shall come as a lion, whereas he came as a lamb when he, uh, when he, uh, when he first arrived. Okay, his first coming. Okay, then we go down to verse 3. And I will camp against thee round about, and will lay siege against thee with a mount, and I will raise uh, forts against thee. 
and thou shalt be brought down, and thou shalt speak out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low out of the dust, and thy voice shall be as one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. All right, this refers to uh, the, siege of, the siege of Jerusalem at the Battle of Armageddon. When the city shall fall, be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravaged, and half the city uh, captured. And uh, the reason that we can uh, believe that this is uh, Armageddon is because we look at the very next prophecy, starting in verse 5, which is uh, the judgment uh, that will fall on the attackers of Jerusalem and Israel. Specifically, verse 6, where it says, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder, and with earthquake, and with great noise, with storm and tempest, and the flame of devouring uh, fire. Uh, these uh, did not happen during the Assyrian invasion, uh, nor in the Babylonian invasion, but it is prophesied to happen in the book of Revelation. So that's why, that again is why this is an Armageddon prophecy. And uh, the prophecy extends all the way to um, verse 8. Then we uh, go over, we skip ahead, verses uh, 17 through 19. This is prophecy uh, 1678. Uh, these verses uh, outline uh, blessings that will fall, that will befall uh, Lebanon on, during, in the Millennial Kingdom. Let's uh, examine it. It says, uh, It is not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And then that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Okay. Then, uh, prophecy uh, 1679. Uh, here we have judgment. Uh, on the Antichrist, it says, For the Terrible One is brought to naught. Uh, the Terrible One really can only uh, be the Antichrist in a uh, millennial prophecy. It also says, The scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So it's not just the Antichrist, but also uh, the scorner, and all that watch for iniquities. So, um... Yeah, pretty much anyone who chooses to serve uh, the Antichrist and, um, and be like him will uh, suffer uh, the same fate as he will. Then, then, then down in verse 21 it says, that Make man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. So, um, this is a uh, calling out of the... Uh, of the unjust. Yes. There are uh, three things uh, that, the, that the wicked do to, all, do to others in uh, verses 21. It says they uh, make men offend in word or give false evidence. They lay snare for the righteous, righteous and pervert judges. They turn, aside, they turn the just aside for reward and defraud men for a thing of naught. You know, accepting bribery, accepting bribes, uh, dishonesty, um, for ignoring justice, uh, giving uh, false evidence, liars, uh, laying snares for the righteous people who um, who set up traps, you know, to take down the righteous. We're seeing uh, we're seeing really all of that stuff uh, play out in today's world too. Okay. Uh, verses uh, 22 through 24. Prophecy 1680. Uh, this talks about uh, the spiritual restoration of Israel. Uh, let's, let's examine that. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. So there was a time when the house of Jacob uh, was ashamed. But now Isaiah is saying, no more shall that happen. 
And, the, and uh, in verses 23 and 4, 24, we see the reasons. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. This is uh, this obviously um, was not something that happened, in, was, that was not happening at the time Isaiah was alive. And... Um, and who knows if that uh, really ever uh, if that ever really happened again uh, after uh, they came back from Bab from Babylon after the Babylon uh, captivity maybe it did but um, you know I think about uh, the 400 years between uh, they received the last prophet and uh, when uh, Christ uh, came uh, with the first advent I don't know. Um, I know I don't know how they could have gone on that long without receiving a word from God and maintain their um, their worship of Him, especially when you consider their uh, their past history. I really don't know. Then it says in verse 24, they also that e that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. So, what's going to happen um, in end times Israel? There's going to be um, you know, there's going to be a sanctification of, uh, of the Holy One of Jacob. The fear of God uh, shall be restored. Yes, uh, sin often begins with losing the fear of God and, uh, and losing any kind of fear of uh, judgment. And in verse 24, it says, uh, There shall be understanding, and uh, they uh, that murmur shall learn uh, doctrine. So there's going to be education. And there's going to be wisdom. There's going to be understanding. There, there are going to be teachers at work. Yeah, I find that uh, fascinating. In the millennial kingdom, though, there's still going to be stuff to learn. You know, there's still going to be uh, areas of growth. Okay. All right. Well, that uh, concludes uh, today's session. Uh, join us uh, next week when we shall begin chapter 30. Thank you.